Good evening. Um, we are here for the public hearing on Local Law B, uh, which we are calling in our shorthand previous violations and past bills. Uh, this public hearing was set a month ago for tonight, uh, duly advertised, and the uh, draft legislation has been available at the clerk's office and on the village website. Um, so it is uh, 708. Is there a motion to open this public hearing? So moved. A motion was made by uh, Trustee Azradi and seconded by Deputy Mayor Major. And we will. Public hearing is now open. I see no public, so we'll keep it open for a few minutes and see if anyone wants to show mm -hmm. up. And, uh, in the meantime, we can. Small chat. <laughs> this, um, this legislation is uh, essentially says that if you want to go to the Planning Board or Zoning Board of Appeals for an application, if you have uh, unpaid tax bills, unpaid water sewer bills, um, you can't get a hearing. Or if you have existing code violations, which you haven't resolved. Correct. Unless you are going to get the sort of um, Unless the, the judgment what you're going analysis for you need is to on mitigate. particular. Yeah. It's, if it's to mitigate that specific violation, obviously we want to let you get to the planning board and get that straightened out. So. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to read the whereases? Um, why don't you read the whereas? Want to read the whereas? No, you're so much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, re I'll read you a whereas, just just yeah. because. Okay. Let me see where. Whereas I can't find it just yet. Okay. Where's that? Uh, it's, mm, it's under the mayor's report. That's why I can't read it. Oh right. <clears throat> now if I leave the room, you can. Read it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, let's pick one. Whereas, the said public hearing uh, was duly held on July 20th, 2016 at Village Hall, 86 Broadway, Tibley, New York, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf of or in opposition to said proposed local law or any part thereof. So we're actually in the middle of that moment right now. This would be a nice time to pan the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... How many minutes have we been? action, which does not require a secret review. Not many. Not many. I like to keep it open at least five or, five or ten minutes. So, mm -hmm. so apparently, uh, I, I learned that most municipalities already have something like this. Um, typically did not. So. Mm -hmm. So who's going to be selling at Yard Sale Day, and who's going to be shopping? Ooh, I'll be selling. Yeah, I think I'll be selling as well. Yeah. Got to supplement that uh, trustee stipend, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to trade in my piggy machine for a new wall Yeah. It's also a wonderful way of getting rid of stuff that um, is no longer valuable to you, but maybe to somebody yeah. else. I had a wonderful experience last year. Where I had, you know, all these chargers for electronics equipment, and you know, when you, they no longer, you, you get rid of the you equipment, and you, for some reason, you keep the charger. You know? <laughs> um, so I had all of these things in a big paper bag, and um, thinking, this will enable me to throw them out at the end of the day because I will have attempted to get rid of them. <laughs> And this young man came up, he was uh, doing a Master of Fine Arts at Bard in sculpture, and his sculptures were created from electronics recyclables. And so he started to go through these and ponder them, and whether it was a coaxial cable or a HDMI or whatever, and I'm watching him, and I finally said to him, going to do with this? And he explained that he did this in sculpture. I said, the bag is yours. That <laughs> <laughs> was a wonderful experience. <laughs> and you were free. And I was free. You were yes. free and he was happy. Yeah. So it's uh, 7-12 and obviously no one has come to the public hearing. So uh, with that said, is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing? I'm so uh, the motion was made by the Deputy Mayor and seconded by Trustee Murphy. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the public hearing is closed. Uh, with that, it is any other, any other discussion? No. Okay, so it is uh, 7.13 and I hereby call to order the uh, July 2016 meeting of the Village of Tivoli Board of Trustees. Would you please join me and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Clerk Bruno, please, in the clerk's report. Yes. Um, clerk's office has sold 596 trash tags since the last meeting. Two payrolls were processed. And uh, between uh, the deputy clerk, Kristen Cleveland, and myself, we attended a um, zoning board of appeals special meeting, public hearing, and a planning board workshop. Very good. Thank you. And thank you also for um, stepping back in and, and covering the, uh, I know there was a night when there was a planning and zoning board meeting and you had to spell the deputy clerk, so uh, we appreciate you uh, jumping back into that role. Oh, a pleasure. Um, reminds you of last winter. And, being a little overextended, maybe? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on to the minutes. We have uh, one set of minutes from the June 15th regular board meeting. Is that right? Just one set this month? Mm -hmm. Three last time. We've had a chance to read them. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? So move. Is there a second? Second. Motion was made by Trustee Ezrati and seconded by Trustee Murphy. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the minutes are approved. Moving on to a treasurer's report, which I have here. Okay, this is treasurer's report for the um, month of July uh, 2016 out of the general fund $57,000. $15,909.48 and out of the sewer fund $12,645.93 and out of the expendable trust $2,271.00 for a grand total of $88,298.78. A little more than usual, I think. Yeah, I think there must be a bond payment in there somewhere. Yeah, and uh, there's also the uh, donated chess table, which is a two thousand dollar thing. So, um, with those with those figures read, is there a motion to uh, accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the treasurer's report is accepted. I'm sorry. Did you get the motion and the second on that? I did. I did thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to pay the bills? Move. Second. Second. Uh, that was Deputy Mayor Major and Trustee Murphy. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll pay the bills. Moving on to zoning report, please, Trustee Ezrati. Okay, we received $365 um, in revenues from our um, zoning enforcement officer for the issuance of um, two building permits um, and four inspections. Uh, and one of those inspections um, was of um, a property at 102 Montgomery Street where a C2G certificate of legal abandonment was uh, passed and issued. Um, so we'll see what transpires with that property um, now that um, I guess that um, falls into the county hands when that happens. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Eventually, I'm not sure it's got to that stage. Yeah. Right, right. There was also an issuance for a fence um, at uh, 19 North Road. Um, and part of that uh, 102 Mark Montgomery Street uh, abandonment was uh, an above ground 275 gallon oil tank, which clearly will need to be disposed of properly. 
um, it, there was certificate of occupancy issued to Joseph Blitzey um, at North Road uh, for a single family dwelling. Um, uh, that's a house that sits on a flag lot, so you can't usually see it from the from the road. Um, it's backed by the Clay Kill, White Clay Kill, uh, and uh, this was one where some variances were issued early, earlier because it is larger than most of the houses in the village. And that concludes the report. Thank you, Trustee Azadi. Uh, normally we would have public comment on agenda items, but we are a little short on public tonight, so kind of skip right through that. On to regular business. Uh, we've done our, our public hearing. So, um, unless, unless anyone on the board uh, has reason not to, um, I don't see any reason not to actually go ahead and vote to adopt uh, the local law regarding the uh, past rules and past violations. And we, I so moved. Uh, is, is there a second? Second. All right, that was uh, moved by Trustee Azrati, seconded by uh, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, this is uh, sure to have a roll call in here when we get to the right page. Just for the folks at home, would it be good to uh, maybe just read the legislative intent, if nothing else? Where do you want me to start? Yeah. Oh, where it says legislative intent? That one, yeah. I think you can find everything I can find it tonight. Here we go. All right. Uh, I learned today that when it's a, uh, when it's called a law with a letter, law B, it's mm -hmm. it's legislation, and then once it's a law, it gets a number. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, legislative intent of local law number one. This local law will provide an incentive to landowners to remedy existing violations of the zoning law and uniform code before applying for permission to use the property in a new or different way. This. Uh, missing a word there. This local law will prohibit acceptance and processing of applications to the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals where there are existing violations of the zoning law or uniform code or outstanding taxes, water, or sewer bills. Yeah. And thank you for that suggestion. I think it was good. Mm -hmm. um, we've put it on the table. Uh, so we will do a There we are. Authorization adoption by the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Tivoli Local Law B, proposed of 2016 as Local Law 1 of 2016. Uh, trustee is right. Aye. Deputy Mayor Major. Aye. Trustee Murphy. Aye. And I also vote aye. And the uh, legislation uh, has been voted into law. It will be filed and take effect, uh, I believe, five days after it's received by the state. Thank you. Uh, moving on, resolution authorizing signing of contract for Tivoli Firehouse Bay Floor Painting. Um, there's one gentleman who's usually here, but I wish was here for this tonight. But, uh, so, uh, this is the second um, contract related to major work that uh, the village is going to be doing on the firehouse. Uh, the first one you may remember from a couple months ago was um, to paint the outside of the building. Uh, and this is to put the proper epoxy coating on the bay floors where the um, where the engines are parked. So um, I mean, obviously, the, the firehouse is uh, one of our, our great assets here in the village. We need to take care of it. Um, it's uh, critical to uh, you know maintaining the the equipment and having that emergency service, fire service, uh, ready to go. Uh, if, when, if and when it's needed, and unfortunately it's, it's needed all the time, as we know. So um, we discussed this, uh, these contracts. I want to thank Trustee Murphy for doing a great job uh, getting us uh, good bids. In fact, we had solicited bids uh, many months ago, and when the board reviewed them, uh, we felt that they weren't exactly uh, robust enough, not apples to apples. So we slowed down. We went back out uh, with my new trustee on the board at that time. and. And uh, I think we ended up with three very good um, comparable bids. And uh, I think while it was a delay for the uh, to, for the fire company, I, I, you know, we, we did our jobs um, as as we should. Yeah, we've got bids with uh, 
10-year warranties? Or? I think the longest one was a five. Five years. Five yeah, years, yeah. 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 Uh, but they yeah. varied. There was a, a one-year, a three-year, and a five-year. Um, and defined thickness of the epoxy and you know, yeah. all kinds of uh, making you feel like they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, authorizing contract for Tivoli Firehouse floor painting project, whereas after a review of three proposals received, um, the mayor has recommended approval of the proposal of Engine Bay Floors, a division of Concrete Restoration Inc., with a cost estimated not to exceed $18,858, and such other terms and conditions as specified in the contract for public work. Uh, a copy of which is on file with the village clerk. Uh, is there a motion to authorize uh, the contract? I motion. Is there a second? Second. And uh, roll call vote. Um, Deputy Mayor Major? Aye. Trustee Azradi? Aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. And I also vote aye. Thank you very much. We will authorize that contract. I'll be back in touch with uh, Engine Bay Police tomorrow. Uh, we'll exchange the signatures and I believe the work is to be completed no later than September 15th. Oh, and um, interestingly, you know, the exterior painting has to happen when the weather's good enough. It can't be really cold. Uh, when they do the interior, the engines have to come out and be parked probably outside. Right. And uh, the uh, desire to do it earlier rather than later is not for the, the paint on the floor. It's actually for some of the equipment on the trucks. Really? Yeah. And uh, moving on to uh, agenda item number four, resolution approving budget modifications. Uh, you'll see there is just one. Um, this has to do with our annual uh, insurance payment. Uh, you'll recall that when we were doing the budget, we didn't have the firm numbers. We had to make estimates. Well, we were right. off by $800 out of a total of 17000 So pretty, pretty good estimates. Um, and, and this is actually... Oh, it's coming out of the contingency. Right, so the, the, the water contingency is, is uh, very, very healthy. So uh, the, the budget modification is to take $887 out of the contingency, uh, put it into liability insurance so we can make our payments. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the budget modification? So move. As a second? Second. That was uh, as Roddy and Murphy. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Budget can be modified. Uh, next item of business is to set a public hearing on Local Law C, which uh, to speak about we're calling Off Street Parking and Associated Changes. Um, is there a motion to? Well, let's see. First of all, I was going to let you talk about it, but I think we'll put it on the table first. We wanted to make that public hearing for uh, Wednesday, August 18th. That's our next regular meeting, uh, or is it the 17th? Okay. It says uh, the next board meeting will be August 17th, so is that Wednesday? I'm looking at Yes. It. Let's double check. Why not? Yes, it's 1, 2, 3, 10, 17. The 30th of the ZR sale, 31st, 1, 2, 3, 10, 17. Yes, 17. Sounds good. Look at you and your new map. <laughs> My new map. What, what did she do there? I don't know. All right, so uh, we are proposing to... Um, set the public hearing that would be for August 17th, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m., uh, right here. Is there a motion to set that public hearing? Is there a second? Second. That was um, Major and as Roddy. And now before we uh, vote on that public hearing, um, I'd like perhaps Trustee as Roddy would talk about this because there's a lot to say, uh, particularly about how long, how much time and effort has already gone into this legislation. Yeah, this, um was one of, we received a Greenway grant in 2013 um, to study um, three major aspects of zoning uh, and, and resolve new code. One was parking, which also included home occupations because home occupations sometimes determine parking needs, um, lighting, um, and that has to do with um, the lumens that are acceptable, shielding lightings, protecting this uh, wonderful um, uh, atmosphere that we have in Tivoli at night where we don't have a lot of light pollution. 
and then the third was site plan procedures. Um, that turned out to be a very ambitious um, group of code changes. Tivoli's code was adopted from suburban code back in 1987. As a consequence, it is sometimes cumbersome, uh, not terribly well suited to a village uh, of the size and character of Tivoli. Uh, so when we go about changing it, it, it requires a lot of effort. We had a committee, a zoning review committee of, I believe, six people who sat here in the village hall and uh, reviewed uh, many of the issues, in a, uh, including redefining home occupations from circus and carnival and uh, some, some things that didn't really seem to continue to apply uh, to uh, the kinds of, uh, to really coming up with a philosophy of home occupations that said, what are occupations that can take place in someone's home that do not impact the residential quality of life in the neighborhood? So we went through that. Um, and reviewed that quite thoroughly. And then in addition to that, we had to, now once we've defined home occupations and uh, dwelling units and those kinds of things, we had to look, consider single family dwellings. We had to consider the size of the property. We had to consider um, multifamily or, or uh, uh, duplexes, all of those kinds of things to come up with appropriate parking. And what we realized in the process was that it was necessary for us to count the number of spaces that were available on the street for the use of our commercial uses. And we had to treat residential parking differently because residential parking implies overnight parking. And we know that in Tivoli we do not permit overnight parking from the 15th of November to the 1st of November. April. So those were all the considerations. We had a lot of fun. We counted every spot in the general business district and spread out a little bit further. Uh, we did it on a Saturday night in July um, so that we could uh, really uh, uh, understand what sort of peak parking needs would be. Um, and. Um, that's what led to this somewhat august document right, it's that we're going to be considering. 20, 25 pages or 30 mm -hmm. pages. Um, and uh, and it'll, be, it'll be posted up on the website so people can yeah. study it. And it does, you do need to study it. It's, it's yeah. long. And for the members of the public who are going to look at it, what they should pay attention to are the tables because that really summarizes yeah. a lot of the changes. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that we're, we're try every time we do one of these things, we are really focused on trying to meet Greenway standards and Smart City standards for walkability, for light shielding, for um, greenery, buffery, buffers, and all those kinds of things. So, there was a lot of thought that put into how parking lots should be landscaped, um, how uses could be shared. Um, what we liked, we liked to, about looking at Tivoli when it's most full is that when the village is full and the parking is really taken up, it makes this feel like a happening place. Yeah. So uh, the fact that it's a little hard to park is not always a bad thing, um, as long as it doesn't uh, impact quality of life or safety. Right, as we said in yeah. the workshop, if once you get to Tivoli and you park, you can walk everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's another advantage of being small. So, particularly if you live in the business district, you probably want to take a really good look at this, or if you're anticipating changes in the use of your home or uh, home occupations, good idea to Thank really you. give it a good read. Thank you for that background, uh, Susan. Um, and with that said, let's vote to set this public hearing for 7 p.m. on August 17th. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the public hearing is set. 
Um, last item, which uh, is not on regular business, is um, to authorize signing of the EAF, that's the Environmental Assessment Form, and the CAF, the Coastal Assessment Form, and submit them to the Planning Board and Dutchess County Planning related to uh, Local Law C. Uh, is there a motion to authorize the signing of the EAF and CAF and submit to the Planning Board and Dutchess County Planning? So moved. Uh, motion was made by Trustee Azrati and seconded by Deputy Mayor Major. Any discussion? just want to thank uh, Michelle Gregg of, what's it called now? Four Corners? Four Corners. Four corners. <laughs> Four uh, corners. For all her help with that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we'll get those documents off to the uh, appropriate places. The next board meeting will be held uh, Wednesday, August 17th at 7 p.m. right here at the historic Watts de Peister Hall. Proceeded by a workshop at 6 p.m. And uh, our regular workshop will be August 10th at 7 p.m. in the mayor's office. Uh, committee reports, Trustee Azrati, please. Okay, I mentioned this at the last meeting. It's an ongoing process. The length of service award, we're doing a review of the investment policy for that to make sure that it uh, uh, continues to be appropriate as uh, the size of that fund has grown and the um, um, the way funds are distributed out of it, this is a time when we're trying to build balances in that fund. So we're doing that. Um, we are, um, we've just placed about $15,000 with the um, Royal Bank of Canada, who is the investment manager for those funds uh, for the awards that were awarded this year. Um, in uh, I don't have anything more to say about the fire department except that we're glad that we're finally getting the bay uh, floors painted. Um, in terms of water and sewer, I'd like to read the uh, uh, well report. Um, basically, the ball lot well was off for the entire month of June. Um, my favorite part of this report is looking to see what the rainfall was for the month. And the month of June, June uh, despite all the sunny days, had actually 3.1 inches of rain. Um, 1.1 of those inches was on June 6th. And I think it all landed on my house. It just <laughs> felt like it was going to, we were going to float away. Um, but the result is that all of the wells were pumping at relatively high levels. The McKnight well was pumping for early in the month almost 12,000 gallons uh, per minute, or seven gallons per minute, 12,000 per day. Um, towards the end of the month, it was down towards 10. Um, the number two Potts West well was also pumping in the nine to 10,000 uh, gallons per day level. The number five pots well was um, pumping for the first six days of the month, uh, and then again in the middle of the month and at the end of the month uh, at 10,000 gallons uh, a day. The two pots east wells uh, combined, we're pumping very close to uh, 20,000 gallons a day. So those are all uh, very good levels of water production. Um, I got really excited. The Woodmark wells on the first day of the month pumped to almost 32 gallons. When we first uh, uh, dug those wells, we were expecting almost a 50,000 gallon a day level. And they've been down to the 20,000 um, for um, most of the recent past. So it's good to see them back up towards 25 to 30,000 gallons a day. Um, the water tower is uh, full at um, 165 to 170 feet. And um, as I said, a uh, lot of rainfall helped with that. Um, we had no water main breaks. Um, and the water quality um, met the test standards for the month. Thank you, Trustee Azari. Um, Trustee Murphy, are you going to read the court report? Yes, yeah. for okay. Trustee Schneider. Trustee um, Murphy, please. 
uh, the summary report for the village court um, from June 1st until June 30th. Um, charges received were two, um, charges disposed was 43, and the total money collected and remitted to the state comptroller was $1,714. Thank you very much. And you'll see, uh, I couldn't even count how many of these overnight parking tickets there are in this particular report, and you see how they probably, they were written obviously in the winter and they don't get um, they're, they're night in court until June, but uh, our, our enforcement of the, of the snow ordinance was, I think, more robust than, than it's been in years. Um, I think you see a lot of these, too, from years prior as well. How much did we collect on these parking tickets? 1700 uh, 1700 Yeah, I mean, there's a few other. There's a $200 speeding okay. ticket in mm -hmm. here. What? Uh, a few other things. No inspection. But, um, from who's that? adjusting to uh, life after Bonnie yeah. in the library, and uh, yeah, things are going well. Uh, there's a series of teen improv workshops coming up uh, Fridays in August from 2 to 3.30, and these are, um, it, you need to register in advance, no experience necessary, um, and there's room for 12 participants. They're being taught by Sean Fisher, who is a teacher, director, actress, dancer, um, who lives in Tivoli, and these are going to be Fabulous. So I encourage people to sign up for that. The Wild About Birds Club is on Thursdays from 2 to 3, and this is to teach young bird lovers to identify local birds by sound and sight, uh, to learn their habits, and to learn how to help them. Uh, Friday, August 12th, from 9 to 10, is going to be uh, stargazing. Stargazing in the park. Uh, it's an event between the library and the Mid-Hudson Astronomical Association. You can bring your own telescope, or there will be some for you to use. Um, the space and equipment are limited, so sign up ahead of time by either calling or uh, emailing the library. And in the event of rain or clouds, uh, the event will be rescheduled for Saturday, August 13th. Um, some of the usual programs, pre preschool story time with Miss Penny, uh, Tuesdays at 10.30. And my favorite, hooks and needles, yarns and threads, 10 to 2 on Thursdays, which is a weekly gathering for practitioners of the fiber arts. It's also a potluck lunch. Um, in terms of natural resources and the environment, the DEC is still working on the trail between the Kid Lane Canoe Lodge Excess Road and Bard College. They're now replacing the culverts, and um, the trail is passable, but don't, uh, don't hit it really hard on your bicycle, or you may be surprised. <laughs> Uh, there's a canoe paddle um, put on uh, by the DEC and the library. It's Tuesday, August 2nd, free and open to all. Uh, but again, pre-registration is required. And um, the free tours of the Bard Arboretum continue on the next to last Thursday of each month at 1 o'clock. And for our historic resources, um, the survey that's being updated by Historic Red Oak and our Bard intern is just about done with phase one. And what it is, is we have a, the survey was done prior to the National Historic Landmark District designation in 1990. And it, you know, the whole village of Tivoli is within this district, which is pretty cool. So there's this list of, I think it's 394 historic resources, and it might be a foundation. It might be, you know, it might be a structure, it might be the site of a privy, and there are a lot of privy sites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what we're doing is um, going through and updating this spreadsheet because after this was done, uh, the 911 system went into effect and changed all the addresses. So uh, by going back and forth between parcel access and, you know, the spread, anyway, it's almost done. And um, and that's that'll be great. So yeah. so thank you, Historic Gretchen, and thank you to our intern, yes. Willowfield. Okay. Like thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, you will recall, fans of the Village Board, last month we did a motion to stop collecting lawn waste in plastic bags and 
and um, that uh, that action by the Board of Trustees has prompted this letter from the Village Green Committee I uh, received from uh, Chairperson Mara Ranville. I'd like to read it now, and this letter will go in the record. Uh, dear, dear Tivoli Village Board, for years the Village of Tivoli Department of Public Works has picked up village residents' uh, grass clippings and leaves and taken them to be composted. If this material is contained in plastic bags, the bags must be torn apart manually by DPW workers. The activity of breaking apart the plastic bags and extracting the organic material for composting takes a significant and substantial amount of time on the part of DPW workers at a cost to the taxpayers of the village of Tivoli. Furthermore, the residue of torn plastic bags is not recyclable and must be gathered and sent to a landfill. Therefore, the Tivoli Green Committee is in uh, full support of the motion, uh, which took effect July 1st, 2016, that the village Tivoli DPW will no longer pick up yard waste in plastic bags. Instead, we encourage residents to buy appropriately sized compostable paper bags to contain their leaves and grass clippings. We also recommend that the residents choose paper bags that consist of a significant portion of recycled paper. Tivoli Green Committee uh, uh, applauds the village for taking this step forward and making Tivoli a greener and more sustainable community. Mara Ranville Chair, Tivoli Green Committee. So we, we uh, couldn't agree more, and it's nice to get uh, get their support. Um, if you haven't logged into the village website in a while, please check it out because our new website went live um, just after the June board meeting. Um, I think you will find it uh, much more attractive, uh, a little more user user friendly, less cluttered. Um, we have many uh, beautiful images on there, and I have to thank uh, the ever generous uh, Peter Monty for uh, helping us get such nice uh, pictures to uh, project what we do here in this village and, and who we are. It's really beautiful. And uh, yeah. it's actually going to be saving uh, the village about $1,000 a year. So not only is it uh, brand spanking new and nice, it's also uh, cheaper for us to do this. So check it out. Um, it is new. You may find the occasional bug. We're still working that out. Um, but uh, I think we're very proud of it, and we, we worked on that for a, a long time. So uh, it's live. Uh, go visit the website. Also, on uh, July 30th, Saturday, will be the Tivoli Yard Sale Day. How many annuals is that? Do you know? Um, I think it's 20, 23. 23? We're getting up there. It's getting hard to keep track. So, <laughs> um, Saturday, July 30th, generally starts at 9, goes, you know, halfway through the day. Um, if you're interested in selling, are we still taking uh, sign-ups for that? All right, so if you want to be a seller, please come visit the clerk. Uh, it's a $10 donation. We create a map uh, to help people who have never been to Tivoli before find their way around. Um, and it's always a fun day, whether, whether you're selling or shopping. So, mm -hmm. And one week after that will be uh, Tivoli. Tivoli Community Day. Uh, it's, it sort of feels like the second annual because we did have a, a hiatus for a couple years. We brought it back last year. It was a great day for everyone who was there. So I hope that uh, even more people will come this year. That's Saturday, August 6th. Starts at uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, goes till about 8 o'clock. There are games, sack races, tug of war, water balloons. Um, we have food um, that's going to be available for purchase from the uh, Tivoli Fire Department, uh, the Monumental Lodge, uh, the Sons of the American Legion are involved, and then um, to sort of balance the food that they're offering, we encourage residents to bring a salad or dessert, so potluck. And uh, there's going to be some live music. Uh, once again, we will be doing the thrilling uh, Jaws of Life demonstration. Um, very popular with the kids. Um, watch the fire department chop up a car. Uh, pretty, pretty fun. So, uh, and also, as last year, we will do the community photograph. Um, and, uh, you know, the last year's photos downstairs, and if, uh, if you doubt that it's a fun day, go take a look at that photograph. People are having a blast. So, Tivoli Community Day, August 6th. Um, I would ask the public if they have any uh, public comment, but there is none. So, um, before we adjourn, I just want to uh, ask that the uh, Village Board adjourns tonight's meeting in memory of uh, the late, great, and dear Peter Hutton who we lost uh, since our last board meeting. So with that said, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting at 747 in memory of Peter Hutton? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we are adjourned. Thank you.